It's your boy Paul Kadar back again with another amazing video. As you can see from the title, speaking about Israel again. Genuinely, I, I love this content creator. Um, his name is Off the Curb Ministries. But like genuinely, well, that's his name on YouTube. Genuinely, guys, like it's quite sad what's happening. And like I'm not here to pick sides and stuff like that. I'm just here to educate and spread awareness. But before we start this video, guys, just take 10 seconds to just breathe. Like literally just take 10 seconds to breathe. How hard is that? Five seconds in, five seconds out. And like, if you want to do longer, if you want to do it during the video, if you want to do it after the video, etc. But guys, just like actually practice breathing. Like a lot of people, I think I just need to spread more awareness on like breathing. It's such a simple concept, but like a lot of people just don't do it. We leave it to our subconscious mind to do it. Like don't leave everything to your subconscious. Remember your subconscious only does the things that you do consciously. It literally just your subconscious is formed through your conscious decisions and actions think about that every single thing you do subconsciously so everything you do like unknowingly like without the will to act on it is formed through the will of acting on it so if let's say for example for 10 years straight you play football like every week subconsciously every week you want to play football if there was no input, if like football never existed, you'd never want to just wake up and go play football if you've never if you never knew about it. You can't do something you don't know about. So genuinely guys, let's get straight into this video. I love you guys all. Blah blah blah. Let's get straight into it. With the entire world watching Jerusalem, it's no surprise that there are six men who claim to have a solution, but only one on this list will achieve it. Will Ismail Haniya do it? Ismail Haniya is the current leader of Hamas, and his desire to see Jerusalem, the east of it, belong to Palestine, began as early as childhood. As a little boy, he grew up in a refugee camp, and there he stayed with his family because they had to flee their home in Ascalon. In 1987, an uprising grew up in Palestine and Hania was part of it and one year later the organization of Hamas was founded. Ismail quickly gained massive support in Palestine and in 2006 he became the Prime Minister. To this day he believes, as the leader of Hamas, that the east of Jerusalem, the Dome of the Rock, the holy sites, all of that part of the city belongs to Palestine, and historically, Muslims across the world also believe this same view. In October 2023, after the recent events in Israel, because Ismail Haniyeh has to live in Qatar, because many Israelis have got a target on his back, he broadcast a message there from his home, where he said, victory is just around the corner for Hamas. And he also famously said, we will never recognize the usurper Zionist government and will continue until Jerusalem is liberated. So what do you think? Do you think that Hamas's current leader has the best interests of Jerusalem at heart? Well, Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's prime minister, has a very conflicting dream for the future of Jerusalem. His goal is to create a new Middle East by harnessing a new friendship with Saudi Arabia. Netanyahu believes he can create a huge economic corridor of transport, energy and communications that runs from Asia all the way to the Arabian Peninsula. One thing you can be sure of and it's this, Netanyahu has built strong ties with the USA over the years and has thanked Christians for their help in the re-establishment of the Jewish state in 1948. He says without Christian Zionism, modern Zionism would not be possible. However, other Israeli politicians aren't as fond and they certainly don't like Christianity. They even tried to pass a law that was particularly aimed at evangelicals to stop them from converting people. But Benjamin put his foot down and said no law will be passed and he also condemned the recent mockery that was seen on videos online taking place on Christians at the hand of other Jews in Jerusalem. So will Israel's current Prime Minister be the solution that Jerusalem needs? Well some of his own people are called for the Prime Minister to step down. They blame him for the great loss of life and they also believe that he pushed Hamas over the line. So frustrated and so angry what he did to us. It's him. Bibi, who is it? You know, the Egypt told him it's going to be a big fuss from the Hamas. No, we don't care. All the military, the Shabak, the Hamas warned him. He said, no, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. And you see, 
what happened. He has to go immediately. But take a look at this, because Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is about to try to do something impossible. He's about to try and bring peace with Palestine and Israel. In an interview with Fox News, Salman stated, every day we are closer to peace with Israel. Why is this such a colossal statement? Because historically, Saudi Arabia has held the view that they believe in a two-state solution, with East Jerusalem being the capital of Palestine. Now, you listen to me very carefully, because as I stated in this video, I truly do believe that if Bin Salman manages to do the impossible, if he brings together these two opposing sides and finds peace, he will become the most powerful man in the entire world. This ambition has also been noted by Iran, and they hate it. Their president, Ibram Raisi, stated that this new friendship with Israel would be very offensive, and it would be like going behind the back of Palestine. Donald Trump is another leader who has great interest in Jerusalem. In December 2017, whilst he was the president, he announced the USA's recognition of Jerusalem as the capital, and he had the US Embassy moved from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Most most Christians and Jews applauded this decision, and Trump's administration said that this would help to contribute to more peace between Palestine and Israel. Critics, however, said that these negotiations should have just been kept between Israel and Palestine, and is all that Trump did was just add more fuel to the fire. If Trump is re-elected as president, do you think he will finally bring peace to Jerusalem? Because the next man on our list will gain peace, but only temporarily. There is a man who the Bible prophesied would come over 2,000 years ago. This man has been called the man of sin and also the little horn. In other words, he'll spring up from nowhere. No one was expecting it to be him. And then this man will come and he will bring peace to Jerusalem. He will also sign a covenant, a peace treaty with the people of Israel. And suddenly everyone will bow down and worship him. In fact, the prophet Daniel said this. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. At the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Did you catch that? He will confirm. In other words, he will not pluck out some new promise from the sky, but he will somehow strengthen existing peace treaties by bringing the Middle East together in unity and everyone, when he does that, will be in total awe that he will be the first person to bring peace to the Middle East. But this man will be a liar, and he will make false promises to Israel of peace, of prosperity. He will promise to protect them, and just when they think they are totally safe, just when they have let their guard down, in the middle of this promise, he will break it after three and a half years. And there he will do something unthinkable called the abomination of desolation. For those who don't know what this is, it's essentially where the man of sin will break into the temple in Jerusalem, and there he will set up an idol for himself, and demand that he should be worshipped by all people around the world. Guys, this is not Hollywood speaking, this is the Bible, and in fact Hollywood gets many of its ideas from the Bible. And when this happens, it will not only affect Israel, but the entire world, because in Jerusalem, this man will set up his system where he will control everyone in this earth by demanding that they have his license. And without his license, no one will be able to function. I'm going to let you into a secret right now. None of these men who we have just seen will bring lasting peace to Jerusalem. But the next man on our list will. But sadly, he is the one that most people will reject. Jesus Christ was a Jew himself. He was from the city of David. And Jesus promised that one day, after rising from the dead, after ascending back to his Father in heaven, he would return back to Israel, back 
to Jerusalem. The Bible says, on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. I don't know what your feelings are towards some of those men I have just shown you, but there's one thing I do know, and it's this. These men will not be able to hold on to their kingdom forever. I wonder how long Ismail Haniyeh will be the leader of Hamas. How much longer can he cling on to that kingdom? I wonder how much longer Benjamin Netanyahu will be the Prime Minister of Israel. How much longer? And even even if these men, even if any world leader has many, many years of favour and support from the people, one day there will be one thing that will claim and snatch their kingdom away from them, and that's death. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he has proved that he is different to all men, because even death could not dethrone him. Even death could not steal his kingdom because he conquered death when he rose from the dead. And my dear friends, one of the most foolish things that mankind has ever tried to do is to try and put eternal life to death. It is impossible to do, and that is why we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps you know that people doubted that Jesus would rise from the dead. Well, he proved all of his critics wrong. And I'm telling you, people doubt that Jesus will return. But I'm also telling you this, there's one thing I am more sure of than the sun will rise tomorrow, and that is I believe Jesus will come back to this earth. I believe he will set up a kingdom for a thousand years and there he will reign and there he will sit on the throne of David, triumphant as king. I said this in my other video about Israel, but there are a lot of sides that are forming. People are saying on social media, I stand with Palestine, I stand with Israel. But what I want to say is, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and I will stand with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as much as we might look up to leaders and different figures, I don't know a single world leader who would personally lay down their life for my sins. But I do know one who is greater than all these leaders, the Lord Jesus Christ, who did it and proved himself on the cross. Friends, what do you think of this man who wept over you, who shed his blood on a cross for your sins, who had nails to his hands and his feet, who died there ashamed for your sins? This man who loved you greatly, that if you come to him, all of your sins, past, present and future, can be washed away. You can be washed whiter than snow. Though you're dirty, though your sins are unclean and have separated you from a holy God, you can be drawn closer because of the cross. And the one who rose from the dead will give you eternal life. And you can stand with Christ on the winning side. But if you are someone who is wondering, why should we keep an eye on Mohammed bin Salman? Here is the video. So guys, literally, um, just a little bit of like, you know, some geography, some politics in there as well. But like the main take from this is stop putting your trust in like world world leaders. Stop putting your trust in like people that are just like programmed to like, or kind of people that are just out there to program you and to make you believe in. Or like, like there's so much false news out there as well. So like for you to just be picking sides, like you don't actually, unless you live there and you know what's happening and stuff like that. Like, yeah, just for me personally, anyway, you can do what you want. Like, just stay, like, serving the person that created it, created all these people. Stay, stay, like, just stay vigilant and, like, just just keep your awareness open and stuff like that. And, like, for me, the main, the main take from this is just believe in God and trust this process, believe in Christ. And, and that's pretty much the main take I can take from that. So it's been your boy Paul Kadar genuinely guys like hopefully you guys found some value in this don't forget keep breathing keep practicing meditation keep keep praying keep reading your bible uh just genuinely just keep showing more love to people and all these things will just like literally do a, a full u-turn and come back straight to you and don't don't do good to others with the intent to get back something or to be rewarded do good just out of like just out of you just being like that type of person just just be someone that likes to do good for others and yourself of of course and and just with without the like the return of investment like don't 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 do good for for an expectancy of something usually like when you do good and you don't expect anything that's when the biggest reward comes so unless you want a small reward then expect something to come it's been your boy Paul Kadar love you guys all peace